Today we're going to turn this notebook into this notebook. So keep watching. Hey everyone, it's Job, and today we are turning this amazing A5 Chic Sparrow leather notebook, which is the Cascade Creme in the color Huckleberry, and I wanted to transform it into a darker colored notebook to match my aesthetic and the leather notebooks that I gravitate towards. I was actually sent this uh, by Chic Sparrow a few months ago for a PR package. This is not sponsored, obviously. Um, but I was realizing that I wasn't using it as much because it's a little bit vibrant for my liking. I love a good color moment, but I think it was just too bright for me and I wasn't using it as much. And this is such a beautiful notebook. It's well constructed and I thought, I should try and do something so I can use it. I didn't want to sell it because I felt weird because it was sent to me and I also wanted to do some DIYs so I thought this would be the perfect middle ground so I decided to dye it. Let's talk about the supplies that I used in this DIY process. So just a heads up, I used a lot more unnecessary supplies because I went through a journey <laughs> trying to dye this but you'll need alcohol, you'll need some leather dye. As you can see, I am showing you the dye that I should have used initially. This is the Feebing's Professional Oil Dye in Dark Chocolate, but I also foolishly bought the wrong dye. And you'll see the long and tumultuous journey that I will go on trying to dye this notebook. But please find the right dye that suits the leather type that you have, but this is the dye that I specifically used. I also purchased some mink oil paste to use as a finish and then I had some rags and brushes that I needed to apply the various things onto the notebook. Okay, let's start this journey. So in theory, re-dyeing a leather notebook isn't too complicated. It involves three main steps. The first step being the stripping of the top layer or sealant layer on your leather goods. So usually there's some sort of like finishing layer and you use alcohol to strip that. And then step two is re-dyeing the notebook or leather item with whatever leather dye that you are supposed to use. <laughs> and then step three, you finish off your project with some sort of top layer or sealant. And in this case, I used mink oil to finish the whole project and to kind of keep that dye intact. Um, but as you can see, I pretty much hose down this notebook with rubbing alcohol. And I think that might've been the first mistake that I made in this process. I think I oversaturated it with alcohol and I didn't give it enough time to dry. And I think the leather might've been too wet and soaked with alcohol to receive the dye that I was gonna add on there. But as you can see, I was still trying to take protective measures here and kind of protect the inside of the notebook because I know that, well, initially I wanted to keep the inside of the notebook, that lovely purple color to have some sort of remembrance of the initial color of this notebook. And I used some washi tape and some scrap paper to do that. But I think next time if I were to redo this project or if I were to redo this process, I would just use some painter's tape because that would adhere to the suede-like interior a little bit better. But as you can see, when I put my first few strokes of dye, it was looking not very good. And I think there were two problems. The first problem it was that it was soaked with alcohol, so I don't think it was dry enough, and I don't think the leather was ready to accept the leather dye. And then, obviously, here's a fail. I spilt leather dye everywhere, which was a really bad mistake but I'm so clumsy and I kind of saw this coming. Good thing I had some paper to kind of catch most of it but it was still a pain to clean up. But I tried to salvage as much dye as I could from this, this spill which is so typical Job but we're moving on. Um, and then the second problem was that I had the wrong leather dye. This dye is good for um, natural leather that hasn't been treated yet. So if you have like plain old like leather that hasn't been dyed so it's usually that like tannish color that would be perfect this would be a perfect dye to use because it would be ready to accept like a little bit of a more subtle dye and as you can see i was pouring dye at this point because i just wanted this to adhere and i just wanted the paint to work and i wanted the dye to work but as you can see it was just not working and it left a mess on my 
pristine white table so that was unfortunate i kind of let that dry and then i did some googling and watched a whole bunch of youtube videos and i repurchased some dye so after patiently waiting for two weeks for the proper dye to arrive i was finally ready to fix this splotchy mess of a notebook as you can see the previous leather dye left my notebook looking splotchy and I kind of went a little crazy with trying to get as much dye on there so I wasn't really letting layers dry so I really made a mistake there but as you can see um, with a few strokes and even just the first layer of this leather dye this is the correct leather dye from Feebings this is the professional oil dye you can see that it's really covering up most of that purple that was underneath the splotchy initial dye process and I kind of was a little bit rushing this because I really wanted this notebook to be finished because I was exi excited to use it but I definitely could have added very thin layers and let it dry in between because I was adding tons and tons of dye I was basically pouring it on there I should have just poured it on there because I was adding so much dye and I was kind of trying to do a good job at the same time by wiping off excess dye using my rag but as you can see this is my second dyeing session i think this was a few days apart so i let it dry for a few days and then i went back in and i was slathering it on and i bought two bottles of this dye i thought one bottle would be enough but i bought two just in case i wanted to work on a different project in involving leather dye but i was going so ham with this and i think yeah i definitely could have been more smart with how i was applying this and i think that i should have probably retreated this leather with some alcohol because i did add that really bad dye at the beginning which probably left some sort of layer and i don't think the dye was kind of penetrating to the best of its abilities because i already had something on top of it so maybe that's one thing to keep in mind but nevertheless i just went ham i went crazy i used almost two bottles i would say that i finished one and a half bottles i still have a little bit left um just in case i want to touch this up later on because i don't know how this leather dye is going to hold up with wear and tear i kind of like the idea of the purple showing through the more i use it because i don't know it would look really cool like maybe if the leather cracked a little bit more or i don't know i'm just excited to kind of see the underneath i was gonna say the underneath color but that doesn't sound right but to see the initial color kind of peek through um and then i went in and tried to buff and get rid of all the excess dye and then i'm finally waxing this bad boy so i'm using some uh, mink oil instead i was going to use some beeswax there's many different ways to finish leather but i thought i would use mink oil because this is something that i can use on other leather goods because i want to f uh, refinish my shoes and mink oil has been something that i've used on my shoes in the past and people have reported that mink oil is a great finisher for like leather goods too so i thought i would use this and the mink oil paste is amazing i used to use just straight up mink oil and it was just harder to work with but the paste really lets you buff it in and i would put really thick layers with the sponge that the mink oil came with as you can see there's a little bit of brown that's being picked up with um the sponge and i would add thick layers and then i would buff it with my rag and then as you can see the setting has changed a little but i basically went in um, i think i did a total of three um, layers of mink oil because i realized i didn't film it but i added some dye to a few portions of the notebook because um, it was looking a little bit splotchy in some places and as you'll see a little bit later there are some splotches um, here and there but I think it adds to the characteristics of this notebook adds some uh, flavor it makes it a little bit different and I made sure to use the little sponge and the rag to get the edges I know there's a certain like edge um like something you use to finish the edges for notebooks but this already had that i just wanted to 
emphasize the edges with more uh, mink oil to make that finish look really shiny and and yeah finished um but i added the elastics and we were pretty much done let's take a closer look at the finished product here's the final product i think that this a5 size chic sparrow looks completely different from what it looked like before we turned the very bright and rich purple to this equally rich dark brown with purple burgundy undertones i love how splotchy it is i know it's not the initial look I was looking for, but I think once I put the mink oil, the splotchiness kind of makes the notebook look a little bit weathered and a little bit more intentional. Looks like I intentionally made it look that way, but obviously you saw the process. It wasn't completely the way I wanted this process to go, but here we are with a fantastic looking notebook. I hope that the amazing people at Chic Sparrow don't get mad at me for butchering their notebook. I think it still looks pretty cool and it kind of looks like something that they would carry which I think is great um, I can't wait to use this and break it in a little bit more the leather did get a little bit more stiff because of all the dye but I think with more use and maybe another coat of mink oil the notebook will be a little bit more supple but I can't wait to use it and right now I have my a5 size Midori um, Midori notebook I forget what it's called but it's an amazing notebook but I will talk about the setup for this in a future video. I hope you enjoyed this video everyone and I can't wait to see you all next week. For now, have a great rest of the day, rest of the week, and I will see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>